There's one last feature that I want to add to this contact app before we wrap up, and that's the add contact functionality. Right now, we can choose a contact and make changes to that contact, but what if you want to create a new contact? The steps that we need to do is more or less an extension of what we've already learned. So feel free to give this a shot without looking at the videos if you'd like. But for the sake of completeness, I'm just going to implement a very simple uh, set of logic to add a new contact to the existing list. Now, what we need to do is have an add button over here, which pulls up a form, which lets you enter these details. And when you're done, you click save and it's going to get saved, right? It's as simple as that. Now, before I do that, here's one thing you might have noticed. I don't have the edit change the name, right? I'm able to change the location, city, state, and phone, but it doesn't have an option to edit the name. It's kind of a lapse on my part. I hadn't noticed this all along. So again, if you want to do this, feel free to do it as an exercise, but I'm just going to implement that first and then I'm going to do the add contact part. So let me go to the index.html and uh, here's my edit button, edit and save button. So they are showing up below the name. So I'm going to take this above the name, all right? And uh, I'm going to have a bunch of spans for the first name and the last name. I wanna have two spans. So I'm going to create similar kind of spans that we have over here. We get rid of the H4. We don't need this. Instead, I'm gonna have two paragraphs here, one for the first name and one for the last name. Now, the first name is going to be this guy here. Going to save that here. And the last name is going to be the second span. All right, I'm going to get rid of this H4 now. Of course, format the code a little bit. Now we have editable names as well. Let's try that out. Refresh. Click on a name and I can change this too. Again, I'm going to add one to both the names and click save. Should have updated. I'm going to click refresh and there you go. We get the name updated. All right. Now, how do we make the add functionality happen? So I have uh, this list here. I want to have a button below the list which says add. So I'm going to go add that button first. Now this is the list. And uh, let's see, it's in this ng repeat. Now this is the list, ul and cr. Now below the ul, I'm gonna have a button which says add. And this is gonna have a method hooked into it. I'm gonna say ng click equals add contact. All right, now this button doesn't do anything right now, we need to add this method. So I'm going to go there and uh, go to the controller. Uh, this dot add contact is going to be a function. Basically needs to create a new user object. So I'm going to actually do this by doing this dot selected contact equals an empty object so that we have a blank slate. Now what I also want to do is add the edit mode. I want the edit mode to show up. So I'm going to say this dot edit mode is true. So we have an empty form. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to refresh the page. And of course, I need to spell function correctly. Save and refresh again. Then when I click add, you notice what happens. I have a blank record I just created and I have these elements over here. Now, if I click save, what's going to happen is it's going to try and do a put request on an ID which really doesn't exist, all right? So we're going to have to figure out what the ID is. I can create some kind of a random ID, for instance. So let me actually go ahead and do that. I'm going to say this dot selected contact, and this should be selected contact. I see the typo here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this object pre-populated with the ID property because I don't want the user to enter this ID, right? So this, I'm going to just do a new date dot to time string. I'm just going to show the, I'm just going to generate a random string based on the current date 
it's fine for now. What you would ideally like to do is have the back end handle what the ID is and uh, have just the post be done by the client. But we are using a simple rudimentary JSON server. So the whole object has to be prepared on the client side. So I'm just populating the ID. You may not necessarily populate it in a real application. Okay, so we have populated this object. I'm gonna refresh the page. And now when I click on add, this farm is gonna show up with the simple object that we have created over here. This is a selected object, there's just the ID. If I were to print the ID, it would show up, but it doesn't have any of these other fields. Thanks to the magic of Angular data binding, as I enter values over here, it's actually gonna create those properties, the first name, the last name, the street, city, state, and phone number. It's gonna actually create all those properties in the right places on this selected contact object. Now, if I were to hit save, what's gonna happen? Well, the save is currently hooked to make output request. So it's gonna find the ID of this object, which is gonna be the time string that we pulled up over here. And it's gonna try and make a put request to slash contacts slash that ID. Well, now does this exist? Well, currently doesn't exist. So but some servers, some data endpoints support making a put request on a, an, on an element that isn't there, but in this case, it's probably gonna fail. So I'm gonna open the console here, and uh, when I click save, notice what's gonna happen. It's gonna try and make a put request to slash contact slash this thing, which is the current time, the, the time string, which is what we're treating as an ID. And the server basically responds saying, hey, I was, I was not able to find it, it's a 404, right? We get this handy error message as well. So this will not work. What we'd like to do is when there is an add that's happening, I don't want it to go ahead and make a put request. I want it to actually make a post request to slash contacts. And the post body should contain the, uh, the new user data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wire in that functionality over here. So I'm gonna have um, add user or maybe create user which takes in the user data and it actually does http.post to slash contacts and doesn't take in the user ID. And uh, the post body is gonna be the user data over here. And this should work pretty much the same way. Now, how do we have the controller call that when the save button is clicked? Well, there are a couple of different ways we can do this. One way to do it is have some kind of a mode which identifies if the farm is being clicked because of an edit or if it's being clicked because of an add. So what we can do is have some kind of a flag which says if it's edit or add mode, then we can have an add mode which has true or false. So I'm going to have a self dot add mode is set to false by default. And if the add button is clicked, I'm gonna say self dot add mode is set to true. And now in my save user, I'm gonna to toggle the edit mode because I want it to come out of the edit mode when the button is being clicked. But here, I check if the add mode is turned on. If self.add mode, then what I need to do is not call save user. Instead, I wanna call create user or add user, whatever that function that I called call it create user, right? So I'm gonna call create user in this case. And if add mode is not true, call the save user. I'm gonna format again. Okay, so again, just to recap, I have a flag which detects whether I'm in the add mode or in the edit mode. If I'm in the add mode, I'm gonna pass the user data to create user. However, if I'm not in the add mode, I'm gonna pass the data to save user. Now, when I'm out of the add mode, what I'd like to do is just clear this flag. So I'm going to have a switch over here, which basically does a self to add mode is false because once this thing is done, whether it was successfully saved or if it failed, I just want the add mode to be out. So I'm gonna set this to false manually. All right, so now let's refresh the page. I'm going to add, and I'm gonna populate with a bunch of values over here. There is a time string that was created by 
my code here, which created this time string, but that doesn't matter. When I click save, what's gonna happen is this add mode is turned on. So it should call create user. So let's try that. I'm gonna hit save. Well, there was a post that was made and data has been successfully updated. So if I were to click refresh, well, there you go. There's my new user who's showing up right here. And of course, I can go to an existing user and see that as well. I know this is not really elegant. There's still a bunch of cleanup activities that we need to do. For instance, if I go to a user which has a photo and I click here, you see the photo doesn't go away because there is nothing in the in this object which populates that photograph. So those are things that I'm not gonna belabor because that's really not in the scope of the promise handling. I definitely encourage you to give that a try. And uh, I'm gonna take the lazy way out and say this is left as an exercise to the viewer. Uh, but yeah, definitely do give it a try if you're interested. But at the basic level, I would like you to walk out of this uh, tutorial with understanding of the put versus the post and uh, of course, we are just calling it with a switch, which is really not uh, that important. What you need to understand is you can make all these different calls using HTTP and have either a, a data updated or a new data created by changing the method and the endpoints.